In this chapter, we'll be doing piecewise functions. So a piecewise function is going to be a function that is composed of two or more other functions over certain domains. So for example, let's say we have uh, f of x is negative x, but only when x is less than zero. And then let's also say that f of x equals x when x is greater than or equal to zero. So we can come up with a little xy table and let's do two tables. Let's do one for f of x is negative x and f of x is positive x. So when f of x is negative x, that's only over the interval for negative x values. So let's plug in some negative x values here, like negative 2, negative 1. So f of negative 2 is going to be negative x. So it's negative negative 2, which is positive 2. Same thing for f of negative 1, it's negative negative 1, which is positive 1. So these are x, y coordinates, that's the coordinate negative 2 comma 2 and negative 1 comma 1. And then let's do it the same thing for f of x equals x over the interval x is greater than or equal to 0. So we can plug in values like 0, 0, 1, and 2 only zero and positive numbers for this domain. So plugging this in, f of zero, it's pretty easy, it's just f of x equals x, so f of zero is zero, f of one is one, f of two is two. So once again, x, y coordinates here, we have zero comma zero, one comma one, and two comma two. So connecting these, this gives us this graph right here. So you probably noticed that this is actually the graph for the absolute value of x and that is the actual definition for the absolute value of x is a piecewise function so this is the absolute value of x and the way that we write it as a piecewise function is f of x equals and then we start a bracket with two separate lines in this case where the first one is f of x is negative x it equals negative x if x is less than zero and it equals positive x if x is greater than or equal to zero. So we kind of have these two separate cases for f of x depending on what the domain is. So it's different functions over different parts of the domain. Okay, so let's do a couple examples here. So we have this piecewise function f of x and f of x equals 4x only on the interval from negative two to two, including those endpoints. And then f of x also equals negative one half x plus nine. And that is on the interval from two to four, not including the two, but including the four. Okay, so let's determine and evaluate the following here. So the first one we have f of negative two. So we wanna evaluate f of negative two. So thinking back to when we were doing this, we just plug it in the function, but we have two different functions here. We have four x, and negative one half x plus nine, we have to determine which one that we're gonna be using based on which domain this negative two lies in. So negative two is going to be in this first domain, which means we're going to be using this first function, which is four x. So since that is in that first domain, that means we are using four x. So f of negative two equals four times negative two, which is negative eight. Okay, and then for the next one, we have f of two. So f of two here, we have to see which domain this two lies in. So it's in this one and it's in this one, but the top one is the one we're gonna be using because of this or equal to sign. So the second one is not including the two, the first one's including the two, so that means once again we are using that first function, which is f of x equals 4x. So plugging that in here, we have four times x, which is gonna be four times two in this case, which is eight. Okay, and then the last one we have f of four. So taking a look at four here, seeing what domain this one lies in. So four is right here in the domain, and it's obviously including the four, 
So we're going to be using the second function this time, which is negative 1 half x plus 9. So that's the function we're using. So plugging this in, it's going to be negative 1 half times 4 plus 9. So negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7. So f of 4 equals 7 here. Okay, so let's do a sketch of this graph. And I'll just write the function down again just so we have it. And we can create xy tables if we want, which is what I'll do for each one of these separately. So let's take a look at the one on the left first. So f of x equals 4x. This is from negative 2 to 2. So I'm going to use some of these values here. I'll start with negative 2. And I'll do negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So just by looking at this, we know that this is going to be a linear function because f of x is equals 4x is a line. And I knew to include the 2 here because it was or equal to for this one. So I knew to include it for that interval. So plugging these values in here, plugging in a negative 2. So f of negative 2 is going to be 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. And I'll just plug in these other ones quickly. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 1 is 4. And 4 times 2 is 8. So plotting these points here, we're going to have uh, negative 2, negative 8. Negative 1, negative 4. 0, comma, 0. 1, comma, 4. And 2, comma, 8. So this is everything from x equals 2 to x equals negative 2. So let's connect these. Okay, so now we have to deal with from 2 to 4. 2 to 4. So let's plug in values from 2 to 4. So this one is not including this one on the right. This is not including 2. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to put it in here just so we know where it would be so we can put an open circle there. So I'll do 2, 3, and 4. Once again, this is a linear function, so uh, we should be expecting a line for this side. So plugging in a 2, that would be negative 1 half times 2 plus 9, which is negative 1 plus 9, which is 8. Plugging in a 3, this would be negative 1 half times 3 plus 9, which would be 7.5, that's negative 1.5 plus 9. And then plugging in a 4, negative 1 half times 4 plus 9, that's negative 2 plus 9, so 7. So plotting these points, we have 2 comma 8. So 2 comma 8, this one is actually directly on this other one, so I'm not even going to actually draw it in there. Then we have 3 comma 7.5, so that would be right up here. And then we have 4 comma 7, which would be right here. And then we can connect these three. And then we want to, uh, so making sure that this is it, we have everything from negative 2 up into positive 4, so we are good. And this is our function f of x. And then we want to know the second question here is f of x continuous. So continuous means that we can draw this without picking up our pencil essentially. And this is continuous. There's no holes. There's no jumps. There's no gaps. So we would say that yes, this is a continuous function. Okay, so let's do one more of these questions. So let's do this piecewise function f of x, which is x plus 2, when x is less than or equal to 0. And then uh, f of x is 1 half x squared when x is greater than 0. Okay, so let's evaluate f of negative 3. So negative 3, once again, we have to look at this value here. Negative 3 is less than 0, so we're going to be using the first function, which is f of x equals x plus 2. So we're going to go ahead and plug that one in. So x plus 2, that's negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. So f of negative 3 is negative 1. 
Now let's do f of zero. So f of zero, that's the breaking point between the two of the, these domains. This one is including it. So once again, we're going to be using that first one, f of x equals x plus two. And we're going to be plugging in zero. So that's going to be x plus two, so, so zero plus two. Zero plus two is two. So f of zero is two. And for this last one here, we have f of three. So three is greater than zero. So we're gonna be using the second function this time, which is one half x squared. So plugging this in one half x squared, that's one half times three squared. So three squared is nine. So that's one half times nine. And I'm just going to, well, I'll write this both ways. I'll write this as nine halves or I'll put 4.5. So it's easier to use the decimal version or even like a mixed number version when you're gonna be graphing these, uh, which is what we're gonna do now. So let's graph it and I'll write down the function one more time. So here's the function that we're using and then I'll create the same tables like we did before. Okay, and now we have to choose what values for x to plug in here. So looking at the first one here on the left, the f of x equals x plus two, that's for everything less than or equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use negative numbers as well as zero. So I'll use say negative two, negative one and zero. And let's plug these in. So the first one is going to be f of negative two. So that's negative two plus two, which is zero negative one plus two, which is one, and zero plus two, which is two. So let's plot these down. So these are x, y coordinates, negative two comma zero, negative one comma one, and zero comma two. So this time for the, the left, there's no left bound here. It's just x less than or equal to zero. So when we're connecting these, we actually have to throw in an arrow at the end on the left because it's everything less than zero, so it keeps on going this time. Whereas last time we had an endpoint. Okay, so with things on the right here, it's gonna be everything greater than zero. So all positive numbers. What I'm gonna do here though, once again, is I'm gonna use zero. I'll use zero, one, and two. I'll use zero uh, because then I can use an open circle when I plot it instead of a closed circle so we can see if it's continuous or not. So. Plugging this in, this is gonna be one half x squared, so one half zero squared, which is just zero. And then plug in the one, one half times one squared, one squared is one, so one half times one is one half. And then for one half times two squared, plugging in the two this time, we get one half times four, which is two. So plugging in these values for the xy ordered pair is zero comma zero. So this one we have to remember is an open circle because it's not included in that one's domain. And then we have one comma one half and two comma two. So knowing that this function f of x is one half x squared, that is a gonna be a parabola. So we have to make sure that we draw it as such. So connect the dots like this. We have to make sure that it has its curvature and it's not linear. So uh, that's the graph of this piecewise function. And to answer the question, is f continuous over its domain? If we notice here, right at the point where they, uh, where the domains switch, where the functions switch based on the domain, that's always the point that you have to check if it's continuous or not. They do not equal each other at that point. As we can see here, there's a jump, there's a point of discontinuity. This one, f of zero equal zero. This one, f of, oops, sorry, wrong one, f of zero equal two. So they were different. So they're not continuous. We cannot draw this function with one straight line or one straight curve or one continuous curve. We would be picking up our pencil. So we say f of x is not continuous, or we would say f of x is discontinuous. Okay, so when you're doing these ones, even though this second function did not contain zero, 
we did use it when we were graphing it. You just have to remember to use that open circle when you are plotting that point. Okay, so that is it for this section.